Hey, Shadow Hunters, it's Gavin Syme, and I think today's video is going to be exciting for any of you who love black and white because we're going to look at taking the emulsions and the nuances of our tones in black and white further. Now, this is going to take us into Photoshop, and I'm actually making this video because I just did the recent update to my signature Emulsion 4 with version 4.2, which has a bunch of updates. Now, if you've installed this and you see this or any action, what you want to do is click this, go to button mode, and everything's going to be nice and tidy and color coded. Now, why do we use actions versus just sticking with Capture One styles, presets, things like that? In particular, I have this whole end-to-end -end black and white system I make. It starts with silver presets uh, for Lightroom for Capture One, right? And so that's the base raw edit. That gives you this base raw edit, right? Then you can go into Photoshop with that, and you can say, okay, I'm going to go to Blackroom Actions, for example, and those allow a more advanced, complex, layer blaze black and white conversion. Or if you're using Actions like Blackroom or whatever black and white Actions you use, you could skip the raw conversion and go straight to the Action. I prefer to start with a raw file, do a base black and white edit, then I go and I either do a more advanced black and white edit with Blackroom, or if I want to do a tone or a tint, I go straight to something like Emulsion, which allows me to do, whether I'm starting from a black and white or just starting from a color image, it allows me to come in here and do these platinum and cyanotype and wet plate, but it all started with this platinum. And this started years ago when I started looking at real platinum prints and I was like, wow, that's amazing. It's so much more nuanced than just split toning or color grading now that we have in, in Lightroom and Capture One and Raw Edit. So I went into Photoshop in that first version. I said, we're going we're gonna to replicate that. And as each new version has come out, I've gotten more advanced with those tones. And I've added new emulsions like selenium, like cyanotype, like wet plate looks. And so some of these are a decision, right? First of all, you have a color or a black and white image, you have to decide that in your visualization. But then you have to come in and you have to say, okay, do I want a platinum look? Do I want a variant of a platinum look? And so what we're doing in this is we build this. You want to run this run first, action first, right? And this goes along with a lot of my more advanced actions like Loomis, like Black, black Room, where it's building this whole layer base. And rather than a plugin that just applies an effect and then just renders it out flat, it's building everything so you don't have have to be a Photoshop nerd. You can just click and then I can remix it with this. I can say, no, give me the Luma mix instead. I can go back up here and just reset this to the base platinum look right here. I can go down to the other mixes though and say, no, mix it to a wet plate look. And it's going to go through and it's going to mix that to the wet plate look. And each one of these, each one of these is studied based on the real world counterpart of of how these kind of tones worked all the way down to a selenium so sometimes if you print selenium it can be very subtle as it's the platinum and it can just be a subtle tone it doesn't necessarily have to jump out so the beauty of doing it all this way is you come back and you run whatever you want and if i say no let's reset this okay so let's go to classic base because if you keep stacking all these effects you get very unique things i'll show you that in just a second but what's happening is you're running these action scripts that have dozens and dozens of commands and are mixing up and so these are recipes is what this is doing. And it's doing a gradient map kind of technique like I use in Blackroom, where it has this master tint, but it's so much more than you would get just by doing a split tone. So the master tint is here. You can control the opacity. So here you're controlling the intensity of your platinum look, right? From a very subtle, just warmth, all the way to an almost sepia type look, but with those platinum tones. But then you can add things in, and there's some new actions you're gonna see here in 4.2, like the Darkroom Dynamic Base Mod. Again, similar concepts to like I use in Blackroom, where we have these layers and we can build up because we're not having to just flatten like a plugin does. So I can have run my platinum look or whatever other variants, and then I can say, no, add this paper texture. I can say, add a curve. I can say, add this Darkroom Dynamic Base Mod. This is new here, and it's going to add more dynamic range, and it's going to do it down here. And because of the way everything's built up on top, the platinum tone is actually going to adapt to what I just did, right? I could do the new shadow mixer layer right here, which is also new. And it's based on kind of these shadow hacking concepts that I'm always teaching of enhancing our shadows and balancing those out. So it starts, you can see, just added a layer right in here. 
and then I can I can use it as is, or I can mix it up or down to make my shadows more or less intense. It can start with a color image. It can start with an image that's already converted to black and white. So what Signature Emulsion is all about is finishing with our selection of emulsion, be it platinum, be it a wet plate type technique, similar to how in the dark room we would choose the paper and the emulsion and the texture that we wanted to make our print with. And this can give us these really fine nuanced results. Sometimes when you do a platinum, it just does this kind of magical thing because there's so much depth to a platinum. And this is based with a ton of study on how real platinum prints respond to tone. So here's our platinum base. And you can then go down here and turn it up and down. You can remix it in any way you want. Or you can add any of these other options here, like textures, like dynamic, like different curves. Or you can do the variants of platinum that are in the latest versions. And this is something that came out with the better system that was created in version four above previous versions, where now I have this really beautiful kind of stacked system and we can do all these remixes and have these recipes and it wasn't easy to do that before so there's a, a high level of refinement kind of elegance giving you all the control so you can come down right here and still mix all the layers and get exactly what you want and get the look you want but if i remix this to the cafe mix let's say you see that the nuance of the tone it's still a platinum but if you've ever studied platinum prints, you know that not all platinum prints are the same. Some are more gold and bronzy and cafe colored. Some are more are more warm. Some are more cool, just like selenium prints, depending on the ratio. And so all that's taken into account with these. And in the 4.2 update, it just takes it further. Now, this isn't a whole instructional video. I'll, there's a link on the product page for platinum that is kind of the hands on video of how to use platinum and all the signature emulsion tools in emulsion four. This is just kind of a quick overview for 4.2 and just kind of a refresher. I've kind of improved and kind of refined and reorganized and just tried to make things a little bit simpler. So you can do all of this stuff, right? And I could say, no, give me the Platinum Luma Mix instead. So there's two ways to remix. You can remix with the mixes, right? The orange ones here run first. This is your base platinum. You always run this before everything. Then you can say, nope, switch it to cyanotype. Nope, switch it to wet plate. No, nope, switch it to selenium. Or do these variants within those. But at any time, you can go down and see all the layers you've built. So you can see when I add the Luma mix of platinum, it's actually enabling some of these alternate layers that were already built in the base layer. It's doing more than that. It's actually changing. A lot of these are actually changing the master tint, which is a pretty complex gradient map. The master tint is on top of just about everything here. So when I adjust the smart curve here, if I click the smart curve, which has its default, but if I remix that manually, or if I go to one of these actions here and say, no, let's do a smart curve remix. So we'll do it this way, this way, this way. And it's just mixing this curve in different ways, right? And the way it's mixing those is remixed dynamically as we change those tones. And that's what good vertical layer building in Photoshop does. Your, your final process needs to be in the right place as you build layers in Photoshop. And this applies to anything. I do this in Blackroom. I do this in Alchemist. And if you're building your own actions, definitely consider this. Because if you can carefully consider where you place layers and blending modes and all of that, it actually can make a dramatic difference in the way your tones mix and the way your shadows mix. We're just refining that. So there's been refinements to uh, the platinum mixes. There's these new actions down here. Some of the, the curves and the tones have been refined. And there's just just little updates throughout. It's still version four. It's still going to work the way you expect it to. I just went in with 4.2 and have done some little nuances and updates. Whatever I'm mixing, right? I've selected my base recipe and then I can say, no, add, add mixers and I adjust to opacity, but I can keep building this. So if I say run the Platinum Cafe mix and then Cyanotype, and then I go back to Platinum Cafe and then I go to Selenium Tumor, I'm going to start getting, you're going to start getting things that actually weren't even something that I envision. So for example, when I test all the actions, I run through each and every one to make sure they don't conflict with each other. And I actually go sequentially and run them all. In this case, on this image, I got this. Now this is a little bit crazy and over the top, right? I mean, we've kind of over-processed here. But what I'm getting at is that you can either come in here to get kind of the pure look of platinum, right? And then mix to cyanotype, mix to wet plate. But maybe you've been mixing things up and you want to say, no, I want to get back to a selenium classic look you can just reset and then go back to that. But you don't have to, you can just keep adding things and just see what kind of a look 
you get and just, just play with it to your heart's content. Here's one that was done in silver and it looks good, but you get a completely transformed image. Let's do a platinum on this, okay? And you can see we just have this nuanced platinum. Let's do a cyanotype. And that's a completely different look. Now I could do the thin remix of cyanotype and that's gonna go here. Now I could also, let's reset, click the red to reset it to the base, okay? And let's do the cyanotype. But I could go down here and you can see that I can control the different layers of the cyanotype. So maybe I don't want it that blue. Maybe I want the fidelity to be different. I want the thinness of the tone to go up or down, depending on what kind of a darkroom style cyanotype process I'm looking for. Now, if you don't want that intense blue cyanotype look, which is very distinct, a lot of people, and this is still used in the darkroom a lot, is a selenium bath. Because a selenium bath gives you this very subtle uh, selenium toning, which has its own variables as well. And you can see there's warmers and there's different options and there's remixes on selenium as well. You can see that everything we're doing in Emulsion 4 is about trying to be inspired by the tools and the way we mix chemicals in the darkroom. And this is a chemical kit for Photoshop that's not trying to do just cheesy knockoff effects, but we're actually taking those tones and the way they gave us depth and shadow to our images and just kind of mixing them in and working them. So that is 4.2 of Signature Emulsion. And I hope you guys enjoy this. If you have Emulsion 4, this is a, a free update. So just log in and go grab it on the site over at simefx.com slash help if you don't know where the links are. And if you don't, I'll put a link to Emulsion in the comments for you to check it out because these, these emulsions and these vintage tones. It's one thing to have a plugin that says, oh, this is a platinum kind of look. But the goal of this action set is to take all of those things and those looks and say, no, yes, this is a platinum kind of look, but it's not just a quick one click effect. You can use it with one click and you can say, hey, I like your mix, Gavin. I'm using it as is. Or you can go down here and you can turn the tint up or down and make it more intense or more subtle. You can do the remixes, all of that. But if you want to, you can also go down and just tinker. And at the basic level, just take like the master tint, turn the opacity up and down, open the other options, fly out, and just turn some of these layers on and off and see how adding a little bit of gold, adding a little bit of bronzing. And you can use all of these variants and tools, whether you're using the platinum, the cyanotype, the selenium, the wet plate. And then there's also textures that are actually emulating like wet plate texture, paper textures, things like that. So you can delete the old on this. You don't need to save the old version, delete it, install the new action file, whether you're using the CS5, CS6 legacy version or the CC version, and just go in and have some fun with this and play with some of the new refinements and some of the new actions. And I just kind of wanted to make this to show you what's new and get you inspired a little bit about using your darkroom emulsions. Let me know how it works and head over to the Shadow Hunters Facebook group and share some of your results. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Peace.